Hello everyone, this is Infinum here, and today we actually have a new update that regards uh, the changes in GAC. So, as you know, uh, we had a current system that goes up to 4.5 million GP in Division 1. However, one thing that has changed now is that it's going to adapt uh, into a more correct fashion where there's a lot of rosters now that do surpass like a threshold of like 5 million, 6 million, 7 million GP. And therefore, uh, these new changes are going to account uh, like the kind of diversity in which GP the new accounts are on. So you no longer have to see disparity between accounts with 5 million GP facing accounts with 7 million GP depending on how the focus on those rosters happened um, and so one of the things that comes with this is the increased amount of defenses which we can see on 33 we are going to have up to 15 character defenses needed so 15 33 squads for defense and 15 for offense as well or more depending on what kind of strategy you use and as well as an actual necessity to ha work on your fleets so uh, as we can see in the old system, uh, only accounts above 3.8 million GP needed to have uh, two fleets, or four fleets rather, two to place on defense, two to use on offense. Now, that is actually going to happen a lot sooner, probably because they looked at their data and they see that at 3 million GP, there's at least um, most of the player base will have the four, four capital ships at least. So the three starter ones plus another one. So uh, one thing that is going on now is at 3.1 million GP, we're going to need uh, four capital ships. So we're going to talk about briefly on some ideas, what I'll be integrating into these things. Of course, there's also uh, new scores, new thresholds to reach in, able, in order to meet uh, Kyber and whatnot in uh, this game mode. So if we actually go over to the current game mode, you can actually see that for the current uh, division th for the current Division 3, if it's going to be compared to the new Division 3, we could see that my score wouldn't be Kyber worthy. I've actually seen some screenshots of some other uh, shard mates of mine and other stuff uh, of people that <laughs> are also in this situation where they are Kyber, yet uh, they're also not Kyber according to the new system, and that's because it depends on how much score you did and uh, eventually it also means that you are not Kyber by the new definition of the system, which is interesting to see, uh, but not as important. So I was actually just uh, doing some 3 recraft, I guess, because of the 3v3 that is coming along. And in my particular case, if we scroll up here, we can see that rosters that are above 3.8 million GP, this will be classified as Division 6. We're going to have 11 character defenses needed. So I put up 22 squads just very quickly. I actually put 23. I have uh, leftover squads. So uh, let's briefly talk about these uh, squads and what I decided to do with this. So SLKR solo because we can plug along two other characters or three. Not three, <laughs> in 3 3 mode. We can plug a lot to other characters that are needed for feats with SLKR and uh, get those done. This is going to be a Rogue One themed GAC that's actually been announced. And therefore, what we're going to see is like a need to put, for example, Cassian and K2SO in a winning squad. And one might happen to be SLKR. Um, what Tim Wars defense uh, viability in 3v3 feels like it's better on defense than on offense, unless you, of course, need Wat Tambor for some GL counter. Uh, so I, I don't know how needed Wat Tambor will be on my offense, but one thing I'm trying to plan out is having my newly Relic 5 Magna Guard for the Master Kenobi requirements become a very thick thick individual who also gets revived by Wat Tambor. Wat Tambor also being super thick himself. Uh, trying to see what this team does. Uh, should be a stalling team. Newt's Extortion. Magna Guard being a permanent tank. Just not allowing you to go through Newt. Wat Tambor with third meter manipulation. With health regen. Uh, it adds a lot of control to this team. I can foresee it being super annoying at these gear levels. But of course it just depends on what you use. Of course, right? If you're going to slap a DR on that thing. <laughs> there wouldn't be a lot. Uh, Rex Aquasoka, this is mostly leftovers of other teams that we're going to see uh, a little bit later. Not a hugely creative team, but 501st teams. Uh, they have some special abilities. Ahsoka will assist on the specials. Echo will assist on the basics. Not a whole lot going for it, but a team, I guess. 
Padme JK GK, a team that is completely nerfed to the ground from 5v5 to 3v3. Padme is a lot weaker in the 3v3 game mode. Not a squad I'd recommend putting on defense as the hold rate is a lot less significant. You can use a lot cheesier teams to go through uh, Padme in 3v3. Speaking of leftover clones, uh, Shakti, Arc Trooper, Sergeant. So uh, this team gets some assists to be called out on Sergeant via Shakti. Arc Trooper is also going to put his turret on Sergeant. Sergeant, whenever he uses his basic, uh, he gets 50% turn meter. I uh, don't think I can click on him via here. I can't, but he does do that. So maybe a team with some DPS here, not a whole lot going for them. Some survivability via Shakti. And, you know, just steal some banners is what I could foresee for this squad. Uh, Gas, Fives, Chewy. Uh, not really a, <laughs> an incredibly synergetic team, but one that could take down an SLKR uh, if Chu is prot modded, uh, Fives is modded for less protection and health combined than General Skywalker, and Gas put in with a lot of DPS could be a fun team to use. Speaking of <laughs> and fun, uh, fun teams to use, one that is not fun at all to use, or, you know, fun to use, not fun to interact with. JKR Julie, GMY, old 2018 team that just crick, kicks ass, absolute ass. Very versatile squad. Of course, JKR should be used for some GL counters or something like that if uh, that is the situation in which you have him geared up, not my case. Uh, other strong squads, of course, you can do a PBSF Malik, that is a super strong squad in 3 3. Uh, but the RBSF Malik, the RBSF by themselves, the R solo BSF solo, who knows what the hell you can do with these guys. They're super strong. Sith Empire is really good in 3 3. And Darth Revan is always to be feared in this game mode, as his abilities do imply. Uh, Trey Sion, another squad that can also do something here. Uh, of course, Trey Sion, I get a lot of use out of them in a 2v5 situation against Geos. In 3v3, I'll have to adapt their situation. I'm not sure. Uh, which other third I can put in there if I go for it. I can't put my Nihilus because he's gear 8. Uh, but if it's worth putting them on defense, if it's worth running them on offense, they seem like a versatile tool to have. Uh, so I'll certainly have to see what this team does. But of course, they're going to be uh, useful by themselves. Hux, Stormtrooper, Sith Trooper. This is a squad where Hux and Stormtrooper, I'd recommend to go along with SLKR if you're trying to put them on defense. But if you want to run SLK or an offense, he should definitely be a solo character. And putting this team on defense is really annoying. This is the best performing team. And I, I do want to go into the mechanics of this team. So leadership, uh, Hux gets dominance, which gives them 100% counterattacks, right? And if you do get a crit with either counterattack via Stormtrooper or via Hux or Sith Trooper, uh, whenever a crit happens, he, Sith Trooper, will assist. So, um... There is a potential assist via Sith Trooper on the Hux counter or the Stormtrooper counter. And then you also have Stormtrooper coming in here with a 50% chance to call an assist whenever he uses an ability. Whether that is his basic, whether that is a counterattack, whether that is when he taunts. And that can call an assist like Hux to do a critical hit and then it calls Sith Trooper to attack again. It's a very fun squad to use. Uh, maybe worth going for a tenacity-based Sith Trooper, maybe worth going for a damage-based one. It's a very complicated team to tackle with unless you're bringing in something very strong. Something that is not too strong, GG. GG is nowhere near as strong in 3v3. If you actually look at his hold rate, it's miserable. It's like 6%. So what I'd suggest you to do is actually use your GG on offense. B1 uh, will try to just escort as many banners as possible in your GG. You're going to leave your B2 with not a lot of banners, but try to use this squad as something that gets like 53 banners and takes out something that's decent. Is probably a better shot than letting it get, you know, 54 on offense because the squad is nowhere near as terrifying in 3v3. Uh, one squad that absolutely kicks Padme's ass, for example, is EP Vader Thrawn. Super synergetic trio here. You've got the control via Thrawn's fracture and EP stuns. You've got the damage via Vader. Uh, you've got TM swaps. You've got uh, a lot of ability blocks going through. So it's a very strong squad to also have uh, at your disposal. Of course, this squad with a little bit <laughs> or an, on a, of a higher gear on Chupio and a lot of tenacity, this team absolutely slaps on defense, so it's definitely worth keeping an eye out as well. You guys probably know this one at this point. Uh, crew, uh, officer, and executioner, the trick to this team 
have officers super fast, have crew built for a lot of um, health as well as executioner, but you do slap a lot of tenacity on your crew. You slap some uh, critical chance even on both officer and uh, executioner because whenever they crit, they do gain some 25% three meter. Uh, when Once these guys are all at relic levels, maybe it's worth just going for some critical damage, uh, but you wanna make sure that you are getting the crits. Sometimes the advantage generation isn't enough. And you want to make sure that you do get that turn meter to go and roll via your opponents. If you add uh, OG Kylo Ren, who is in here as a solo character, uh, instead of this first order officer, you're making yourself a very, very, very difficult team to tackle through. However, at my end, I do need some solo characters just in case to take out some squishier teams out there. And OG Kylo Ren will absolutely provide that via the Zeta ability here that gives him some extra protection recovery via this ability. So some more things that we can see in these squads. So let's go back here. We have JTR. JTR, what a, this is such an amazing team. In 33, they don't have as much protection recovery as you can give to them in 5v5, but these guys kick ass. If you have a super fast hero fin and hero Poe, Hero Finn will be the fastest character, allowing you to TM swap over to Poe. Poe will get an, a, a stun, and if they're both very even on speed, uh, since this is a TM swap, Finn is ready to go. You've got a mass assist going, uh, you've got JTR with an ability block that's also going to remove their turn meter, uh, what's also called the remove time, or what people usually call when they're playing with this in aligned force user. Uh, but it's a very fun team that just absolutely kicks ass, uh, to put this in perspective. If you put EP Vader Thrawn uh, on defense and you do get outsped by this gear 8 resistance hero fin, which is possible, you can make this guy really fast at gear 8 with your 5 dot mods, uh, he can absolutely slap without knowing what's going on. A team that's absolutely huge banner stealer. And it only really depends on JTR Zeta and the quality of your 5 dot mods. It's an amazing team. Speaking of not as such an amazing team, we have uh, the other side of the resistance. And this one is just supposed to be carried by whichever veteran you have reliced up between your ray grinds or your SLKR grinds. And you want to make sure that you have that squish leader between Fen, And you want to make sure that you have the other veteran in here. And the idea for that is whenever the leader or the other veteran dies, they get bonus turns, so that's really important. Another thing you can do is add Kira lead if you're not using her elsewhere, like with your emphasis or something. And what happens in that situation is uh, with Kira lead, they're going to recover protection whenever they're critically hitting, and veteran Han can do some pretty cool things when he's recovering protection as well. He double taps, he can accumulate some counter chance, that's a great thing to do. Phasma pilots, what can you use these guys on? They're bad. <laughs> put them on defense, put them in your back wall, let them do their thing. They're not great. Uh, a team that's actually really good against timeouts are Bosk, Grief, and Mando. You don't need a whole lot of gear on Bosk, not gear 12, you can do it with less. As long as he's he can take some punches. Uh, you can take out those weird Bastila, Barris, GK squads, Barris, uh, Hoda, Jolie, all mixed up under that Bastila leap. Uh, becomes a lot easier to tackle them down. Of course, if they're G13, maybe slightly harder, harder on your boss to go through. You gotta be careful with that dispel as well from Bastila, but those timeout teams, you can absolutely manage through them via your Mandos Disintegrate. Speaking of other cool teams that we have here, Separatists, uh, not a whole lot going into those. You get some stealth, so you can get these guys counterattacked. You have a fast Droidica, so he starts rolling out. And if you don't bring a dispeller against Droidica, he can stay permanently under damage immunity, and you see him just slowly one-shotting your team <laughs> like you see in Light Side TV. Uh, however, the, this Droidica is nowhere near as good as the ones you see in Light Side TV. Django, great plug-and-play character in any Separatist squad. Uh, or even, you know, with Mandalorians, if you happen to have your Relic 5 Bo-Katan at this point, and some utility that you need to get out of Django Fett, maybe a character to do that with. Uh, Bad Batch? Okay, Bad Batch, I think this is going to be the best variant in 3v3, where the team is just going for pure control, and you're going to take out Wrecker, and here you're just going to put, you're going to try to inflict as many stuns as possible via the Echo Tech interaction hunter with the TM swap. It's probably the strongest way of using these three. Of course, Wrecker does have a slot 
in this team over uh, probably tech, but I think tech is going to be more important for the overall stun ability, uh, although Wrecker is an important defense up generator, so difficult to separate these four, a little bit like it's difficult to separate the Night Sisters. Uh, here we have a Saj Zombie, and I put in Nest because my other sisters aren't great. And of course, other plug-and-play places that you can have. GBA. Uh, you can put GBA with other Geos. In 3 3 the Geonosians are not as strong as some other teams out there. But GBA can be nice to have. Han Solo, another amazing plug-and-play character to have available. I wonder if a Relic 3 is going to solo some stuff. I'd imagine that Han would solo stuff in 3v3 at Relic levels against squishier teams as well. Uh, but you can also make some uh, different Rebel teams where here, for example, you just take off Chupio and you put Han Solo here instead. Or you just do CLS Han Chewie and you use more clones in here and you ditch this crazy ass team that you don't need. It depends really on what you're trying to do uh, with, with your roster, of course. And that's the greatness of 3v3. It's that it's just not mold into one shape, right? You don't have this static bounty hunter team. You don't have this static resistance team. You can just mix around with resistance, for example. You can swap in Finn and have Finn bros, and you have JTR with the veteran smugglers. So it depends on really what you're trying to go with. Uh, more often than not, what I try to do, if I were you, is analyze your opponent, see what usually sets, and or what his roster has most benefits on, and what you really need to counter those teams. So that's probably what I tried to set on defense based on that. So uh, yeah, these are some shouts on what you can do in the new Division 6, which now it's like, I don't know, Division 3 earlier maybe seemed like it would uh, interact with more people. Division 6 now starting to look really specific, but I think these are some of the teams that I'm going to look forward to, to rely on in regards to my chances in the next season. Um, I have some extra blood via the Jedi Master Kenobi requirements, but maybe we can do something with it. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, super exciting stuff. Let me know Let me know if you guys are going down by a lot of divisions, where you go down from Division 1 or the former Division 1 back to Division 5. That could also be a, a, an experience to go through. We shall see. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, and let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this uh, new GAC. So uh, should be a lot of fun. And looking forward to it. And most importantly, I think the Division 1 rosters are going through a, a chaotic challenge of having as many teams to place on defense as they will. So that's going to be fun. And of course, the, oh, the extra fleets. I didn't talk about the extra fleets. Let's just go through those really quickly. <laughs> and of course, fleets all depend on the amount of capital ships you do have. Uh, I have Negotiator Malevolence and an Invested Finalizer. I do not, however, have a good fourth capital ship because I didn't invest in that. Uh, apparently, I do have a Relic Front that I could use with Chimera. Chimera Hound's Tooth, super strong synergy that you have in between those teams. Endurance, a timeout fleet, a soon-to-be relic Mace Windu. Uh, we'll have to think about what to do uh, with my fourth fourth fleet. Uh, Negotiator Malevolence, they go in along in well hand-in-hand. -hand. Finalizer goes really well with the First Order. Going for that fourth fleet, you know, sometimes you might have to get creative a little bit here. Uh, where you're going to slap in the rest of your tanks with the Endurance. Or maybe you have some... Uh, rebels that you can still throw on a team or some Thai Bomber synergy to put with your Empire. Something to have fun with. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to set this yet. Really unsure if I set in a strong finalizer, if I use both get two fleets on offense, if I choose to use finalizer on offense because it's probably better banners than malevolence. It's a whole lot of things still to, to discover and I think that part is going to be uh, relatively difficult to find out. So yeah, uh, we shall see. What are, what are you guys' thoughts? Because now everybody does need to get into these fleets a lot sooner uh, than before. So we shall see. Let me know your opinion. <laughs> really, really, really curious on that. So uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, this is a way longer video than usual. I hope you guys enjoyed talking a little bit about these 3v3 squads. And yeah, there you go. See ya.